Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new video for the Machine Quilting Block Party. Today we're piecing a new Dresden plate. It's called a Daisy Dresden because it has beautiful curved edge petals. I'm going to teach you how to turn that curve really nicely and then how to piece the petals together to create this beautiful Dresden plate. So let's get started. For this block, we have two pages of templates. We've got our cutting template, our turning template, and a circle turning template as well. These are pages on pages six and seven of your quilt pattern. And when you print these out, make sure that that one inch box on both pages measures exactly one inch. And I saved myself a little bit of time here by printing directly onto freezer paper. So I printed onto the paper side of freezer paper. And this saves you some time because it makes making the templates much faster. So I'm gonna take a second piece of freezer paper, and I'll lay it onto a hard pressing surface here and give it a good press. And that's just gonna stick waxy side down to my pressing board. And I'm gonna to top it with my templates already printed out onto freezer paper, paper, and I'm gonna press that down, again, waxy side down. So what this has done is created a nice stiff template. So it's just a little bit more reinforced and it's gonna last a lot longer. Now, alternatively, if you don't wanna mess with the templates, you are going to need the turning templates. You have to create that with freezer paper, but for your cutting template, you can always use template number four from the Dresden plate template set. So once you get that created, you're gonna cut them out. And I want to cut this out very carefully. So for the cutting template for block four, I cut the straight lines with a ruler, and then I took a pair of scissors and cut that curve just as smoothly as I possibly could. I repeated that process with the turning template for block four. You just want that to be as smooth as possible, especially on the turning templates the circle and the petal shape because this is how we're going to get our nice smooth curve in our Dresden plate. Same thing for the circle template. Just take your time cutting out these shapes. It's really gonna pay off. Okay, so now that we have our templates created, let's make our petals. So I've rough cut some tumbler shapes from Fabric B and I'm topping it with my cutting template for block four. Just like that. So basically I just cut out those edges from my strip of fabric and I left this curve to cut separately because it just takes a little bit more time and attention. So now I'm setting this up so that I can cut basically at a very natural, it feels like a very natural angle for me. And I'm gonna just cut very carefully right along that line. And you know, it's not the end of the world if this is off because we're gonna be turning this edge. So don't panic if you, know, you can't cut this super smoothly using this little uh, freezer paper template. I have to say it is a lot easier to use the actual cutting templates that I've created. So here, let me show you how this works. Basically you center up that template and you're able to actually cut against that edge. And that's just a little bit easier. But again, we're gonna be turning this edge so it's not the end of the world. Even if that's a little bit off, we're gonna be turning it under so it absolutely doesn't matter. That's the next step. So here is my petal shape and I'm gonna to top it with the turning template and this is waxy side down. So I can take a hot iron and just press it and that's gonna hold in place. It's not gonna shift or wiggle around as I'm turning this edge. Now I've sprayed a little bit of starch in this little cup and I've got a paintbrush. And this is how I turn the edge. I'm gonna paint that starch about, you know, it's right along the edge of the template, but I don't want to get the paper wet. So I'm trying to stay on the fabric and away from the edge of that turning template. I don't want to soften it up too much. Now I'm using a pair of tweezers. This is something that dad taught me actually. Uh, he has much bigger hands and fingers than I do. And he was really struggling to turn these edges. So he started using these tweezers. And when I watched him do it, I was like, oh, that's how you don't burn your fingers. <laughs> so I started using these too. And um, you can usually find these in the embroidery section of your, uh, of your quilt shop. And uh, they really grip the fabric. And you can see I'm just gripping it and pulling it over right along the edge of that curve. And then I'm using the tip of my iron to heat set it and press a nice crease in there. So I'm gonna work about an inch at a time 
painting on that starch. And I wanna use a paintbrush like this. I don't wanna spray it because that will result in way too much starch. The whole thing will get soggy and wet. And notice how I'm really tugging and pulling that fabric over. And that uh, starch is what allows me to do that. If I get the template too wet, then it won't work. It'll just kind of flex around and I won't get a nice smooth curve. So this is how I start. I just kind of generally get that curve going. And then anywhere that's kind of winging up, like that spot's winging up just a little bit, don't worry, I can go back and paint a little bit more starch and just force it into submission. We can make it do exactly what we want. Now I always get questions about spray starch and using it and bugs and all that kind of stuff. Um, starch has been used for uh, hundreds if not thousands of years on fabric to do, you know, make fabric do what we want it to do. And I don't think it's a bad thing. You know, we're gonna wash our quilt once it's done. We soak the blocks before we connect them together. So, you know, that's gonna get the starch right back out of the fabric again. It's not a big deal. And I don't think that using starch on your fabric is a bad thing. I use it in almost all of my quilts. So there we go, we've got a nice smooth curve. You can always check yourself, flip it over and take a look at it. And if there, you see any kind of wobbles or blips or anything and you wanna redo it, you can, or you can just try and um, make that curve nice and smooth if you see any issues. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it back over. I'm just gonna look for these little problem areas about right here, anywhere that it's winging up a little bit. And then I just take the iron and I just use the edge of the iron kind of like a steamroller, just steamroll right over it. And really what we're doing, if you can see the fabric, it's just kind of making intentional pleats to force it over and force it flat. And that looks good. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors and I'm just gonna trim this down. We don't need all this excess fabric here. That'll get in your way. So I just trim that down to roughly about a quarter of an inch from that turned edge. That looks good. My scissors are running a little dull, so it's a little frayed, but that's okay. And then I usually give it one last press, just kind of a steamroll press here. Sliding the iron over that edge will really get it nice and flat. And then you just peel off the turning template and you can reuse your turning template to turn all of the edges of your petals for this block. So once I get that removed, I give it one last press to get it nice and flat, and then it's ready to go. So that's how you're gonna use the turning template to turn that top edge for all of these petals for the Dresden plate. So you're gonna turn six fabric B petals, and for me that's this pretty blue, and then you're also gonna turn the edges of six fabric C petals, and this is this pretty green fabric for me. So I'll meet you back here once you get all of your petals turned and we'll start piecing them together. So I'm gonna take my petals and stack them on top of one another and make sure that this curve is matching up real nicely, that turned edge. I'm gonna slip it underneath my presser foot and then take about three or four stitches down, then back stitch three or four stitches and then stitch on down. Now this uh, Dresden plate, it is 12 petals and each section is a little different. So you might want to piece these two at a time and then return to your layout just to make sure that you're getting the right arrangement for your petals so that the colors are flowing around in the right order. So I'm gonna clip this off and I know I need to make petals that are blue and then green and then blue. So I'm gonna open this out, grab my blue petal and top it just like this, making sure to align those edges. It doesn't really matter what happens down here where it gets um, narrow because that's gonna be covered up by our circle. Our center circle is gonna cover that. But I do wanna make sure that these turned edges are lined up really nicely. I'm gonna stitch to the edge of my scrap charger and then slip those pieces under the foot. And again, just stitch on down, back stitch a bit, and that just ensures that those pieces are not gonna come un, you know, undone right on the edge of the Dresden. Really like to make sure that's nice and secure. And I'll stitch on down. So I'm just gonna wash and repeat that those steps to create four quarters of my Dresden. Again, double check your pattern so that way you create each of these sets the right sets of colors. The next step is to take your quarter dressed in plate pieces and fold them in half like this. And you wanna line up those seam lines and just give it a little finger crease. 
And what this is gonna do is it's gonna provide a nice crease line down the center of that Dresden plate. And then you can line up your ruler and you can square this off. Now it should not need very much squaring. So what I'm doing here is I'm lining up with that center crease line, kind of the center of that center petal. And then I'm also lining up and I'm checking the placement of these two edges. And more than likely it's going to be just like a little bit of fuzz that's extra on both sides. And I've got a rotating mat here, which is really handy for this kind of thing. So I can rotate and cut that side. So it's just a tiny little trim, but what this does is it guarantees that this quarter shape is square, that this is a 90 degree angle, so that when I set and piece it to the next piece, I know that that line created by those two Dresdens is gonna be nice and straight. So take your time trimming up all of your pieces, and then we'll piece it together real quick to finish our plate. So I've pieced two quarters together just exactly the same way, piecing from the outer edge, back stitching, stitching on down. Now I don't stop to press my seams open simply because it doesn't really matter. I already made sure that this is going to finish up nice and flat and perfect by trimming up these quarter shapes. By doing that little bit of trimming, I'm sure that this is gonna be just right. So I'm going to get started stitching, back stitch and stitch into the middle. Always stitch from the outside to the inside with these, simply to make sure that that outer edge matches up nicely and you don't end up with petals that are kind of wonky and don't match up. I grab a scrap and stitch into it, so that way I can stitch from the outside to the inside on this last side too. It's gonna to be real tempted to, tempting to just hop across that center part and go into the next one, but trust me, this will make sure that your petals that outer edge of the petals really comes out nice. Now you might be wondering about that scrap I keep stitching through. Um, that's just a method of minimizing my bobbin thread waste. You know, every time that you break thread and have those long thread tails, it's waste a lot of thread. And it also stops the bobbin thread and top thread from kind of gagging on you, you know, in between uh, long stretches of stitching. So by stitching, kind of keeping the machine in stitching mode, and stitching back onto something else, then I'm guaranteeing that I'm not gonna have any kind of mess up or bird's nest on the back of my Dresden plate. So there we go. I've taken a minute to go on ahead and piece the background of my quilt block, and you can find instructions on doing this in your quilt pattern. I've also pressed it in half lengthwise and widthwise to create these crease lines, and that's gonna help me line up the Dresden plate and make sure it's nice and centered. So this looks good. Now. Again, it's up to you. If you've seen the first Dresden plate that we did, you can pen this, just put a whole lot of pens in it. I like to glue it down just so that gives me the greatest amount of freedom uh, of how I wanna applique it, whether I wanna stitch it down or I want to hand applique. I just really like gluing it down so it's not gonna shift and move. So I centered up the plate and then I'm just applying, this is Elmer's glue in a little glue bottle that has a very fine glue tip. And I'm just gonna glue one petal at a time, press it down, and then you can press liquid glue with a hot iron and that's gonna dry it completely. So I'm gonna work all the way around the block, just one petal at a time, gluing it down, and then I'll top it with the circle and glue it down as well. I'll meet you back here when we're ready to stitch these down so they're permanently attached to the background. So I'm gonna start stitching around the center circle and I've decided to stitch this Dresden plate with a blanket stitch. And one thing I did was I took a little bit of time to test the stitch. I just uh, have my little scrap here that's so handy and I just played with the settings until I found the stitch that I really liked. And the settings that I'm using is a 1.5 millimeter width and a two millimeter length. So that's the size and width of my stitch. And this stitch basically takes one forward, one stitch forward, and then one stitch to the side. So here I'm gonna work my way around. And as I work around the circle, I've just got to rotate to stay right along the edge of that curve. 
Now this is one of those things that's totally up to you. You know, you don't have to do this much stitching along the edge. You certainly don't need to do a decorative stitch like this. I just thought it might be nice to add a little bit more thread in this area. I'm gonna be going around it when, with quilting. Uh, I'm gonna be stitching over this area again. And I just like that idea, um, you know, but it's totally up to you. We turn that edge so you could also hand applique it. You could stitch this down by hand. You could also do a straight stitch and definitely watch the video where we did Dresden plate, um, the block number two, our pointy eight Dresden plate. I just did a straight stitch uh, about an eighth of an inch from the folded edge and that looked great too. So it's totally up to you how you wanna finish this and how you want your Dresden plate to look. I like playing around with lots of different stitches and just seeing the effect that it creates. So I hope you can see that as I'm stitching around this, I'm very gently pivoting the block so that way my needle stays right in line with the edge of that curved circle shape. And in really slow and steady stitching is the key. You notice that I'm not putting my foot down and trying to speed through this. I'm just keeping the machine at a slow, steady speed that I can easily keep up with my hands so that it doesn't get off track. And I think that's gonna be really, really pretty. I'm gonna lift my needle, lift my foot so that way you can see that beautiful stitching all around the edge. So I'm gonna stitch around this edge just the exact same way. I'm gonna switch thread colors for when I do these outer petals, but it's just gonna work exactly the same way. Slow, steady stitching and pivoting the block as I work around it. And here's what it looks like whenever you finish block number four. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed learning how to piece this Daisy Dresden plate. If you have any questions about this piecing or applique process, please ask in the comments below. I'm here to help you learn more about piecing and machine quilting. And speaking of machine quilting, that is coming up next. We're gonna learn how to machine quilt this beautiful block with a variety of designs. So make sure to subscribe to my channel on YouTube so you, so you don't miss out on the next video in this series, Blah. <laughs> Anyway, until next time, let's go quilt.